In today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at Filmora's preferences. With the right preferences, you can make the most out of your program and allow your video editing experience to be smoother. We already learned about render settings and proxy files, but now it's time to look at Filmora's preferences and see how you can customize the settings to make the best out of the program. So let's head over to Wondershare Filmora and then go to Preferences. If you are on Windows, it would be File and then Preferences. Just head over to Preferences where you get this window. We are already familiar with this. We took a look at Performance last time with the Preview Render section and the Proxy section. But now let's start from the General uh, tab. So the first thing here is the user interface and it's asking about the appearance of your Filmora. So this right here is dark mode. As you can see, everything is gray, everything is dark and uh, the texts are white, but we also have light mode where things are the opposite. Let's try that. Here we are. So this is light mode. So you can see most of it is white and the text is black. So it's the exact opposite of what we had in the first place. Then we have system default, which is dark mode. You can change these to your preference, but if you have a hard time reading text on the program, I would recommend the light mode because the text is easier to read. But if you do not have that issue, then you can just choose whichever you want. And then we have the output section where we can open the output folder after exporting video. So when I export a video, the location of that video will open up automatically. And that way I can just work with the exported video. We will take a look at this right now and also play alert sound after a conversion. So after Filmora has exported your video, it will play this alert sound to let you know that the conversion has finished. So let's try this and see how it works. I'm going to head to sample color where I will drag a random color. And let's say this is my project. Let's export it. Just save it wherever. And there we go. It opened the folder that has my video in it and it played that alert sound. There we go. So that is what it meant. Let's delete this. Head back to our preferences. So these are helpful, you can leave them on. And then we have things regarding the program itself, such as updates that you can choose where, uh, when Filmora looks for updates, every week, every day, every month, or never. Uh, you can choose whichever you want, but I recommend every week or every day because every month is a bit too long and never is not right. You can reset all dialogue warnings. This can help with your space. If you saw that your uh, Filmora is not running uh, smoothly, you can always reset dialogue warnings, extra proxy files, and render files. We'll take a look at those soon. So you can reset these if you have a need for it. And then we have Message Center, which is basically Filmora letting you know that there is a new feature on your program, there's a new update, and just any other announcements that Filmora may have. And you can turn this on to not show the messages automatically. I'm going to turn this on. But if you want to always be uh, informed about the new updates and announcements, then you can leave it off. And then finally, we have project library window at startup. So the startup window is that little window that we see when we first open Filmora. This one uh, is really important. I would recommend leaving this on so you can maybe head over to the AI stylizer, the auto reframe and all the other tools that are easy to access with the startup window. The next tab is the folder path. So we have something called snapshot files and snapshots are basically screenshots of your video when you're editing and you're just choosing where those are saved. You can choose another folder if you'd like. 
We also have upload files folder, which is where your uploaded files go. We have effect packs, which is the stuff in the effects menu right here or the elements. And whatever you download and install will go in this folder. You can change the location if you'd like. And you can see your effect packs. Right now we don't have any, so it's zero megabytes, but you can always manage them by hitting this. You can delete these effect packs that you did not use, but we don't have anything here. But if you did, you could just select it and delete it. All right, let's head over to editing. And these are the default duration. So when you first import an image into your timeline, it's going to be five seconds long because it's set to five here. For transitions, it's two seconds, effects, five seconds, freeze frame, five seconds, split screen, five seconds. So we're going to take a look at these in action soon after we see the other uh, options. We have photo placement, which means that when you first bring in a photo, Filmora is going to make it fit your screen. And this is really helpful or else you would have to scale it up yourself, which is just extra work. So you can make changes to fit or crop to fit, pan and zoom. I would suggest fit. So if you need to crop it or use pan and zoom, you would just do it yourself. The difference between these two is that let's say I have a 16 by nine uh, project dimension. If I drag in a square image with fit, it's just going to end up here, meaning that we will have these black bars on either side. But if I use crop to fit, Filmora is going to crop the image in a way that the image is covering the entire screen and it's not giving us any black bars. But the problem with that is that you will lose parts of your image. And we already learned what pan and zoom is. I'm going to leave it to fit. We have insert mode, split selected tracks only and insert. So insert mode is when you select a footage and you insert it on a track. So you can choose split selected track only and insert, which means that if I have a track and I drag an image on it, it's going to split that track right there. We're going to take a look at how this works. And then we have the split button, which uh, is the scissor icon on our playhead. It's talking about this scissor. You can choose whether you want to keep it or not. All right, and then let's head over to the save tab where you can ask Filmora to save your project every four minutes. Change this if you need to. And then we have performance. We already looked at these two uh, settings, but we didn't look at the GPU. So the GPU or just this section alone is talking about your computer's hardware. So it has nothing to do with stuff over here but it's talking about your computer hardware and your graphics card. So I would recommend turning both of these on so you get the least amount of lag and crashes. But again, depending on each computer, it, the experience may be different. So if something works smoothly for one computer, it may work differently on another computer, either slower or faster. And this is all related to the GPU of your computer and the hardware that it has. I would recommend turning both of these on. All right, now let's head back to the editing tab and just mess around with these things. So when I've imported this color, you can see how it's five seconds. I did not uh, extend the time and I did not split it. The reason why it's five seconds is because of this. If I change this to 10 seconds and drag this in again, it's going to be 10 seconds. And you saw that I did not extend the time. I just dragged it from the sample color folder onto my timeline. Let's delete these. Let's go back to preferences and do the same thing for the others. Let's make all of them uh, 10 seconds. So transition, 10 seconds, effect, and freeze frame, split screen. Click away and close this. Now let's try to add a transition on top of this. This is 10 seconds long, so our transition should cover the whole thing. And it is. There we go, it's pretty long because we set it to 10 seconds. 
Let's try something else. Let's try effects. Add that on top and it's also 10 seconds. There we go. And we have split screens. Let's add a split screen right here. And that is also 10 seconds. So these are 10 seconds long because we changed them in our preferences. You can adjust the number to your liking. Let's also try freeze frame, bring this back. Let's try with a video actually. Drag this video in. And let's go somewhere around here, right click and add freeze frame. So the freeze frame will be 10 seconds long. Let me just extend this to the beginning. So right here, 10 seconds is where our freeze frame or the purple bit finishes. There we go. Now let's try the image placement. I'm going to drag an image and place it on my timeline. So this is what I meant. The image is not exactly 16 by 9 like our project I mentioned. So therefore we're getting these black bars. But at least I'm getting the image in the right dimension. If I scale this out, you can see that we're not getting rid of the top and bottom. And we just have the image in the original size. Let's see what happens when I change image placement. Go back. Instead of fit, put crop to fit. Add this to my timeline. And there we go. It has been kind of zoomed in for me to see the image cover my screen. Let's place a color underneath so we can see what parts we lost. And you can see that I've lost the top and bottom of my image because it was cropped. If I go back and change the preferences again, fit, close this, and just put in the image again. This is what I get. Let's turn off the visibility. So the original image is not exactly a landscape shot, but because we turned on crop to fit, in the first try, we got a landscape shot because Filmora cropped the top and bottom. The one on top is the original uh, image and the one in the back is the uh, cropped version. Let's get rid of these. Now let's try this with the pan and zoom option. I'll head over to my preferences again, but this time instead of crop to fit, let's try pan and zoom. Close this. And we learned that Pan and Zoom has two screens. We had the start screen and the end screen. Let's just take a look at it right here. This was Pan and Zoom. We had a start screen and an end screen. So throughout the composition, it's going to slowly move from the start screen and minimize to the end screen. And now we've asked Filmora to do it for every image that we bring in onto our timeline. So let's drag this on and see what happens. So we can see that it's already pretty zoomed in. Let's play this. And it's coming out from the center of the screen without me having to go to the crop panel. Let's drag this image in. Play this back and now it's again panning and zooming without me having to do it myself. So if you're planning to edit a lot of slideshows or videos that have a lot of images in them, you can turn this option on. So instead of going through each image and then going over here, you could just turn that on and it would be done for you. Let's delete this. Now let's learn what snapshots are. In our preferences, there was a folder path for snapshots. Snapshots are like screenshots of whatever that's in your preview screen. I'm going to drag in this video where I will uh, add on different types of filters. Go to effects and just put some filters on it. Now let's say I want to ask the opinion of my colleague about these filters. Instead of exporting my video every time to ask someone's opinion about what I have done in my video editing, 
I can just use snapshots and do my work more efficiently. So just hit this button right here and now you have a snapshot. Drag this on my timeline and it's just a picture which is um, zooming in because we have pan and zoom turned on. It's just a picture that I can just send to someone else to ask their opinion and then get back to my editing. So this was one example of how you can use snapshots. Other times you can get some feedback from the fonts that you used or the placement of different elements on your screen. So you can just send snapshots to send a preview of what you've been working on so far. And whatever you take as a snapshot will be saved to the snapshot folder. You can choose another place if you'd like. Let's close this. I'm going to change this back to fit and then close this. And now let's take a look at the display options that we have. If I wanted to change the dimension of my project, this right here is landscape or white screen. Let's say I changed my mind and I want to make it a square. Instead of creating a new project, I can simply head over to this button. Click it once, change project aspect ratio. Over here, I can change it from white screen to a square. I can change the resolution if I'd like, put in my custom number, and even change my frame rate. Hit OK, and now I have a square. Now remember that it's not changing your video, but your project aspect ratio. So if I want my video to fill this square, I would have to work with it myself. I can either scale it in like so or crop it. Let's hit Control Z and just crop this, change the ratio to one to one. And now I have cropped my video. Hit OK. There we go. All right, um, let's go back in here. We have original media when paused. So if you're viewing your video with all the effects and filters, when you pause it, you're going to see your original video. I'm going to switch this off. And now let's take a look at zoom level. If I want to take a look at a detail on my video, I can easily zoom it in by selecting one of these zoom levels. We have as much as 400% or 10%. There we go. Let's hit fit to get our original zoom level. We also have safe zones, which are going to be frames around your video. Let's place this so you can see there's these lines. And when you're editing, you want to make sure you turn this on so that your subject remains in the safe zone at all times. This way you can ensure that no matter what happens to your videos on different display, your subject is always in the center and the uh, purpose of your video is not missed. So because we have a square, this is a square, but if I turn my aspect ratio, to white screen, it's going to be white screen. I just need to bring my video back. Just hit original ratio. And now this is my new safe zone. So if your subject's in the corner, you may end up uh, having it cropped on different platforms. You wanna make sure the important things in your videos stay inside these safe zones. You can also adjust the volume of your entire project, not individually, your entire project over here if you need to. So instead of muting every single audio track one by one, you can just mute the whole project like so. Bring this back. You can make your project full screen by clicking this. Let's go back. You can view it in your computer's full screen, see if everything is detailed and the colors are right, and then you can proceed with exporting. And that was how you can use Filmora's preferences to get the best out of your program.